solitude, often painted with the somber tones of isolation and alienation, carries a far richer palette than its surface gloom might suggest. This exploration into the existential dimension of solitude reveals not only its inherent challenges, but also its profound opportunities for introspection and self-discovery. To understand solitude is to journey into the very core of human existence, to grapple with feelings of existential dread, while also uncovering potential pathways to profound personal enlightenment. When we peel back the layers of solitude, we encounter the raw, unmediated self, a self that often remains hidden in the hustle of social interactions. In solitude, the noise of the world subsides, and the quiet speaks. It's in this quietude where many discover the whispers of their true desires and fears, unshaped by the expectations and judgments of others. This confrontation with the self can indeed be unsettling, for it brings to light the parts of our psyche that we typically veil under the guise of busy schedules and social engagements. However, this confrontation is also where growth germinates. In the silence of solitude, the mind has the liberty to wander, to break free from the conventional, and to explore the abstract. It's here, in the depths of thought and emotion, that one can stumble upon unexpected insights and revelations. The process of self-discovery that solitude fosters is not merely about finding answers, but about learning to ask new, more profound questions about ourselves and our place in the world. Yet, the path of solitude is not without its perils. The lack of social connections can lead to a sense of alienation, where one feels fundamentally disconnected from others and the world at large. This sense of separation can breed a unique kind of existential dread, a fear that perhaps one's life is but an echo in an indifferent universe. The challenge then is not only to endure solitude, but to find meaning within it, to transform the quiet from a space of existential threat to a cradle of personal empowerment. Engaging with solitude requires a delicate balance. It demands that we confront uncomfortable truths about ourselves and our existential conditions. Yet, it is this very engagement that can lead to a richer, more nuanced understanding of what it means to be human. In the absence of external influences, one's identity can be crafted not by the social mirror, but through a more personal and introspective process. The beauty of solitude lies in its duality. It is both the harbor of existential dread and the birthplace of self-revelation. Each person's journey through solitude will be uniquely their own, colored by their experiences, fears, hopes, and dreams. For some, solitude may be a harsh landscape of loneliness and despair. But for others, it can be a quiet room brightened by the light of introspection and discovery. Thus, the philosophy of solitude is not a doctrine of withdrawal, but a narrative of exploration a tale of navigating the inner landscapes of our being. It is about understanding that while solitude can be a place of challenge and alienation, it is also a profound opportunity to meet oneself, to dance with one's shadows, and perhaps to emerge into the light of greater self-awareness and understanding. In embracing solitude, we may find not just the terror of the abyss, but the stars of new constellations in our own minds. Solitude often painted with the somber tones of isolation and alienation, carries a far richer palette than its surface gloom might suggest. This exploration into the existential dimension of solitude reveals not only its inherent challenges, but also its profound opportunities for introspection and self-discovery. To understand solitude is to journey into the very core of human existence, to grapple with feelings of existential dread, while also uncovering potential pathways to profound personal enlightenment. When we peel back the layers of solitude, we encounter the raw, unmediated self, a self that often remains hidden in the hustle of social interactions. In solitude, the noise of the world subsides, and the quiet speaks. It's in this quietude where many discover the whispers of their true desires and fears, unshaped by the expectations and judgments of others. This confrontation with the self can indeed be unsettling, for it brings to light the parts of our psyche that we typically veil under the guise of busy schedules and social engagements. However, this confrontation is also where growth germinates. In the silence of solitude, the mind has the liberty to wander, to break free from the conventional, and to explore the abstract. 
It's here, in the depths of thought and emotion, that one can stumble upon unexpected insights and revelations. The process of self-discovery that solitude fosters is not merely about finding answers, but about learning to ask new, more profound questions about ourselves and our place in the world. Yet, the path of solitude is not without its perils. The lack of social connections can lead to a sense of alienation, where one feels fundamentally disconnected from others and the world at large. This sense of separation can breed a unique kind of existential dread, a fear that perhaps one's life is but an echo in an indifferent universe. The challenge then, is not only to endure solitude, but to find meaning within it, to transform the quiet from a space of existential threat to a cradle of personal empowerment. Engaging with solitude requires a delicate balance. It demands that we confront uncomfortable truths about ourselves and our existential conditions. Yet, it is this very engagement that can lead to a richer, more nuanced understanding of what it means to be human. In the absence of external influences, one's identity can be crafted not by the social mirror, but through a more personal and introspective process. The beauty of solitude lies in its duality. It is both the harbor of existential dread and the birthplace of self-revelation. Each person's journey through solitude will be uniquely their own, colored by their experiences, fears, hopes, and dreams. For some, solitude may be a harsh landscape of loneliness and despair, but for others, it can be a quiet room brightened by the light of introspection and discovery. Thus, the philosophy of solitude is not a doctrine of withdrawal, but a narrative of exploration, a tale of navigating the inner landscapes of our being. It is about understanding that while solitude can be a place of challenge and alienation, it is also a profound opportunity to meet oneself, to dance with one's shadows, and perhaps to emerge into the light of greater self-awareness and understanding. In embracing solitude, we may find not just the terror of the abyss, but the stars of new constellations in our own minds. As we delve deeper into the philosophy of solitude, it's evident that its true essence lies in the nuanced interplay between isolation and self-realization. This nuanced interplay unfolds in a landscape where solitude becomes not just a physical state, but a psychological and spiritual experience. Through solitude, we are provided with an uninterrupted space to confront and navigate our innermost conflicts and aspirations, leading to a profound personal transformation that is often invisible in communal settings. This transformation often begins with the stark realization of our own vulnerabilities. Alone, stripped of the distractions and defenses that society affords, we face the unvarnished truths of our existence. This raw confrontation can be daunting. It challenges the very foundations on which we've built our identities. Yet, it is precisely this challenge that propels us toward genuine self-awareness and growth. In solitude, we encounter the opportunity to question not just who we are, but who we wish to become. Such questions often lead to a reevaluation of values and priorities. Without the constant influx of societal norms and expectations, what truly matters to us becomes clearer. This clarity can shift our life's trajectory, guiding us toward pursuits that are more in alignment with our authentic selves. In this way, solitude acts as a crucible for refining our purposes and passions, burning away the inessential and leaving only what is truly important. Moreover, the silence of solitude is rich with the potential for creativity and innovation. History is replete with stories of individuals who have found in solitude the freedom to think differently, to break molds, and to explore uncharted territories of thought and expression. The quietness offers a blank canvas, free from the usual critiques and constraints of the external world, encouraging bold strokes and new colors in the personal and professional realms alike. But solitude also teaches us about the intrinsic value of connection. Through experiencing the absence of others, we often come to appreciate more deeply the significance of relationships in our lives. This newfound appreciation can inspire us to cultivate more meaningful connections when we emerge from solitude. Relationships forged or strengthened in the wake of solitary reflection tend to be more deliberate and satisfying, infused with the insights gained during times of isolation. Ultimately, 
The experience of solitude brings us face to face with a fundamental existential question. What does it mean to be truly alive? In the quiet moments of solitude, we are invited to ponder this question without pretense or pause. The answers we find may not be simple, but they are often transformative, offering new lenses through which to view our lives and the world around us. The philosophy of solitude, therefore, is much more than an exercise in enduring loneliness. It is an active, dynamic process of self-exploration, creativity, and existential questioning. It challenges us to find balance between being alone and being connected, between exploring inward and acting outward. In this balance lies the true art of living a continuous dance of withdrawing to the inner worlds and returning enriched to the outer world, each movement informed by the other, each step a testament to the complex, beautiful human experience of being both solitary and social beings. Navigating through the philosophy of solitude further reveals its profound influence on our perception of time and space. In solitude, time often seems to expand, offering a vast landscape for reflection that feels markedly different from the hurried pace of everyday life. This altered perception of time allows for a deeper engagement with our thoughts and emotions, inviting us to linger over nuances that would typically slip past unnoticed. It's in these stretched moments that many experience significant epiphanies or engage in the kind of sustained thinking that brings clarity to complex issues. Space, too, takes on a new dimension in solitude. The physical spaces we occupy when alone whether a room, a quiet corner of a library, or a bench in a secluded park become containers for our thoughts and emotions. These spaces, no matter how small or seemingly insignificant, can feel expansive when filled with our solitary contemplations. They become sacred places of retreat where the external world fades into the background, allowing internal landscapes to dominate our attention. In this context, solitude can be seen as a form of meditation, a deliberate practice of turning inward. Just as meditation seeks to quiet the mind and foster a state of peace and awareness, solitude provides a similar psychological environment where the mind can reset and rejuvenate. It's a space where the mental clutter that fills our daily lives can be sifted through and organized, where the essential can be separated from the trivial, leading to a greater sense of purpose and direction. However, embracing solitude requires a certain resilience. The mind, when left to its own devices, can venture into realms of self-critique and rumination that are not always productive. It's here that the ability to navigate one's thoughts mindfully becomes crucial. Learning to direct one's focus away from negative spirals and towards constructive reflection is a skill that enhances the benefits of solitude. This skill enables individuals to use their time alone, not as a trigger for anxiety or sadness, but as an opportunity for healing and growth. Moreover, the solitude journey impacts our resilience in facing life's inevitable adversities. By regularly engaging in periods of solitude, we build a fortitude that steadies us against the storms of life. The self-sufficiency and confidence that come from knowing one can endure alone are powerful allies in any challenge. These qualities honed in the quiet moments of reflection equip us to return to social environments with a stronger, more centered presence. The ongoing engagement with solitude also fosters a deeper understanding of the human condition. It connects us with the universal experiences of doubt longing and joy that are common to all human hearts. Through this connection, we realize that even in our most isolated moments, we share a bond with others across time and space a realization that can lessen the weight of loneliness and highlight the interconnectedness of all life. Thus, as we continue to explore solitude, we see it not just as a state to be endured, but as a profound teacher. Its lessons, though sometimes stern, are laced with the promise of deeper wisdom and a more nuanced appreciation for both the solitary and social aspects of our lives. It invites us to embrace the quiet, to listen attentively to the soft murmurings of our soul, and to carry the insights gained into the broader tapestry of our existence. As we delve further into the essence of solitude, literature offers a myriad of windows into its profound impact on the human spirit. Consider the introspective journeys of characters in classic novels, such as the brooding Mr. 
Rochester in Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre, or the solitary wanderer Ishmael in Herman Melville's Moby Dick. These characters epitomize the transformative potential of solitude, where their inner dialogues and struggles reflect broader existential themes. Their stories are not merely personal, they are universal, echoing the solitary experiences of readers across generations. The poet Rainer Maria Rilke, in his letters to a young poet, extols the virtues of solitude for artistic and personal growth. Rilke advises the young poet to go into yourself and to discover the necessity of writing. He speaks of the importance of solitude for deepening one's own world, a sentiment that underscores solitude's role not just in understanding oneself, but in cultivating a profound connection to one's work and creative endeavors. In solitude, the boundary between the personal and the universal blurs. Writers and poets often find that in their deepest solitude, they tap into the universal human conditions of despair, hope, love, and longing. This resonant theme is vividly captured in Virginia Woolf's To the Lighthouse, where the character Lily Briscoe reflects on her painting alone, processing her thoughts and emotions in a space undisturbed by others. Her solitude is both a challenge and a companion that aids her in her quest for artistic expression and personal understanding. Moreover, solitude can act as a crucible for transformation, as depicted in Paulo Silho's The Alchemist. The protagonist Santiago spends days alone in the desert, and it is through these experiences that he learns about the language of the world and the soul of the world. His physical journey through solitary spaces parallels his inner journey towards spiritual enlightenment, illustrating how solitude can be a pathway to discovering life's profound truths. This literary reflection brings us back to the reality of engaging with solitude in our own lives. The lessons from these narratives encourage us not just to endure solitude, but to actively engage with it as a state ripe with potential for discovery and transformation. In doing so, we learn to balance the silence within with the noise without, weaving the insights gained in solitude into the fabric of everyday life. As we confront and navigate through the challenges and revelations that solitude presents, we must remain mindful of its dual nature. It can be a harbor of creative rejuvenation and self-reflection, yet it can also lead to feelings of estrangement and melancholy. Managing this delicate balance requires wisdom wisdom that is often born from the very process of engaging with solitude. Thus, solitude emerges as not merely a physical state, but as a profound journey that each individual must tailor to their own needs and circumstances. It is a dynamic and evolving process one that teaches us about the depth of our own resilience and the breadth of our inner life. By embracing solitude, we do not retreat from the world. Rather, we prepare ourselves to return to it with a richer, more nuanced perspective, armed with deeper empathy and a clearer sense of purpose. It is important to recognize the role that solitude plays in the cultivation of inner peace and spiritual depth. This process is beautifully illuminated in various spiritual traditions where solitude is not just a practice, but a crucial path to enlightenment. For instance, in Buddhist philosophy, solitude is often recommended as a means to practice mindfulness and meditation, essential tools for achieving clarity of mind and liberation from suffering. The spiritual benefits of solitude are also emphasized in other contemplative practices around the world. In the Christian tradition, Mystics like Saint John of the Cross and Saint Teresa of Avila wrote extensively about the importance of solitude for deepening one's relationship with the divine. Their writings suggest that solitude can lead to a profound encounter with God, an experience that transforms the soul. These spiritual narratives underscore the idea that solitude can be a gateway to transcendent experiences, providing a deeper understanding of one's place in the cosmos. Moreover, the practice of solitude allows for a type of introspection that can lead to greater moral integrity. When we are alone, free from the eyes and judgments of others, we are faced with the truest reflection of ourselves. This unobstructed self-awareness is a fertile ground for ethical reflection and moral decision-making. It is here, in the quiet moments of self-reflection, that one can rigorously question their motives, actions, and values aligning them more closely with their ideals. However, 
The pursuit of solitude for spiritual and ethical enhancement is not without its challenges. It requires not only the courage to face oneself, but also the resilience to endure the discomfort that often accompanies such deep self-examination. The existential discomfort experienced in solitude, often manifested as loneliness or existential dread, can indeed be profound. Yet, it is precisely through enduring and understanding this discomfort that one can achieve greater emotional and spiritual growth. This dialectic of solitude as both a condition of existential challenge and a state of profound peace and insight highlights its complex nature. It is a dynamic interplay between being and becoming, between the present state of the self and the potential for transformation. The journey through solitude is thus not a linear path, but a cyclical process of retreat and return, where each phase of solitude deepens one's understanding of oneself and enhances one's ability to engage with the world in a more meaningful way. Engaging with solitude ultimately prepares us to return to our social worlds with a new perspective. The insights gained in solitude can enhance our social interactions, making us more attuned to the needs and feelings of others, and more capable of authentic relationships. The solitude-infused perspective is one that values deep connections over superficial exchanges, fostering relationships that are rich in understanding and empathy. The philosophy of solitude encompasses a broad spectrum of human experience, from the existential and spiritual to the ethical and interpersonal. It challenges us to embrace the quiet, to confront our innermost selves, and to emerge enriched with deeper wisdom and empathy. Solitude in its essence teaches us the art of being alone without being lonely, and of using our alone time not just to endure, but to grow, to create, and to connect more deeply with the world around us. Through solitude, we learn not only about ourselves, but also about our place within the greater tapestry of human experience.